हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अ फेमस पोएम ऑफ विलियम ब्लेक द टाइटल ऑफ द पोएम इज द टाइगर लेट अस स्टार्ट टाइगर टाइगर बर्निंग ब्राइट इन द फॉरेस्ट ऑफ द नाइट डोंट यू थिंक इट्स राइमिंग विद द नर्सरी राइम ट्विंकल ट्विंकल लिटिल स्टार How I wonder what you are, but you know it. It's a very enigmatic poem. It's a very rhetorical poem, and the theme of the poem is very serious. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. Tiger here is a symbol of ferociousness. of fearfulness and the poet is amazed to see the brightness of the tiger and see the spelling don't be confused because tiger here is not the actual animal it's a symbol of ferociousness so tiger tiger burning bright the fur of the tiger it's orange and shining yellow like the fire so in the forest of the night the darkness in the darkness of the forest the brightness of the tiger of the fur of the tiger becomes more paradoxical actually you will notice that the whole poem is full of paradoxes uh, tiger is a symbol of ferociousness as i already told you and another poem of william blake is the lamb and lamb is a symbol of meekness of innocence so here also you will realize that paradox what immortal hand or eye could frame the fearful symmetry so the uh, poet is full of wonder the poet wants to know what immortal hand was that immortal that cannot die that is uh, perennial that to which death can never come so whose hand was that whose eye was that could frame the fearful symmetry so frame you know frame is to formulate plan to draft so it an eye is needed a mind is needed to formulate such a symmetrical body symmetry proportion uniformity equilibrium so such a proportionate body needs a plan needs a draft so who made that draft who prepared that plan who dreamed about this proportionate body uh obviously not a human eye obviously not a mortal eye obviously not a mortal hand so it must be an immortal hand it must be an immortal eye and who is immortal all of us know gods and goddesses they are immortal god is immortal so the tiger has been created by some immortal hand but which was that immortal hand what immortal hand or eye could frame the fearful symmetry so this is a rhetorical question which has no answer so in the whole of the poem you will notice that there are so many rhetorical questions which are not answered what immortal hand or eye could frame the fearful symmetry in what distant deeps or skies 
burned the fire of thine eyes on what wings dare he aspire what the hand dare seize the fires in what distant deeps or skies distant deeps here means oceans seas skies firmament burn the fire of thine eyes the fire that is present in your eyes where was it before entering your eyes where did it exist did it exist in the deep oceans or did it exist in the high firmament so where did it actually exist who brought it from there on what wings dare he aspire what the hand dare seize the fire on what wings dare he aspire so the creator who brought fire for your eyes if it was in the skies how did he reach there in the first line he has wondered Uh, where the fire actually existed the fire that is in the eyes of the tiger where it had existed whether it had existed in the deep oceans or it had existed in the sky so if it had existed in the sky on what wings dare he aspire so what wings were used by that creator to bring that fire from the skies on what wings did he aspire so this line can have a reference to the wings of icarus icarus uh, is a mythological figure he was given wings by his father daedalus daedalus was the maker of wings and he gave wings to his son icarus icarus uh flew too high in the sky and the sun melted the heat of the sun melted his wings he fell down and he died so uh, these wings can refer to the wings of icarus also so on what wings did he aspire what wings what type of wings had been used by the creator to bring that fire from skies what the hand dare seize the fire so her, whose hands were so powerful whose hands were so daring that they could seize the fire they could catch the fire they could hold the fire what and what soldier shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart and when thy heart began to beat what dread hand and what dread feet and what shoulder and what art so could twist the sinews of thy heart sinews uh, stands for tissues muscles so whose shoulders were that actually whose powerful hands were that and what art who possessed that art who was so skillful and who was so powerful that could twist the sinews of thy heart who could mold who could shape the tissues of thy heart the muscles of your heart so who was powerful enough who had the skill enough to mold the muscles of your heart to give shape to the muscles of your heart and when thy heart began to beat what dread hand and what dread feet and when thy heart began to beat so he has given shape to your heart and after 
your heart being given shape your heart being given life when it started beating it means when you came into life when you became alive when you became animate when your heart started beating so what dread hand and what dread feet were the hands and feet of the creator shaking were they full of fear were they trembling may be possible uh, because the shape of the tiger is very fearful now when it became alive it's possible that the creator might have trembled to witness the shape the fearful shape of the tiger so he is again asking this rhetorical question what dread hand and what dread feet so were the hands and feet of the creator full of fear full of dread were the hammer were the chain in what furnace was thy brain were the anvil what dread grasp dear its deadly terrors clasp so in this quatrain in these lines there is an analogy of the iron smith black smith he uses these instruments hammer chain furnace anvil so it seems as if the creator of the tiger was working in a uh, in a workshop like a iron smith or a blacksmith so what the hammer what the chain so which was that hammer of which metal was it constructed of which metal was it made what the hammer what the chain now what were the chains that that bound you because it's very controlled when he his heart has begun to beat when he has become animate when he has become alive so it's uh, just quite impossible to control him without chains so what the chain what chains tied you what chains controlled you of what metal were made those chains that controlled you what the hammer what the chain in what furnace was thy brain furnace is a place which can create a high temperature where the metals are melted by the smiths by the iron smith iron is melted other metals are also melted in furnace so in which furnace was your brain melted in what furnace was your brain prepared what the anvil anvil is again an instrument uh, used by the iron smith it's uh, a heavy iron block with a flat top and uh, concave sides on which metal can be hammered and shaped so what the anvil which anvil had been used by the creator what dread grasp grasp means grip so who could grip you who could catch you who could grab you what dread grasp dear its deadly terrors clasp so who had the courage dear uh, means uh, who had this audacity who had this courage to grab you to grasp you to catch you to grip you deadly terrors so this terrible shape of yours the terrible body of yours by whom could it be grasped by whom could it be grabbed by whom could it be gripped so who could catch your fearful body who could control your fearful body whose hands were so daring whose hands were so courageous when the stars threw down their spears 
and watered heaven with their tears. Did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? When the stars threw down their spears. Here, stars uh, actually symbolize uh, the angels who must have become full of fear, who must have become a little bit despaired, a little bit dejected to see the creation of the Creator. And in dejection, they must have thrown down their spears. They must have protested this creation. So, when the stars threw down their spears, when the angels threw down their weapons, being dejected, being full of fear to see the new creation of the Creator, new creation of the God, when the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears. So, throwing down their spears, they became dejected and they were full of tears. Their eyes shed tears and filled the sky with water. They, they were full of fear to see this new creation and they started crying. At that time, did he smile his work to see? When the stars or the angels, they were crying, they were weeping, they were uh, filling the sky with their tears. At that time, did the creator smile to see his marvelous work did he smile his work to see did he who made the lamb make thee now see the paradox here the creator who created lamb and lamb you see it's written in capital letter here so it's a symbol of innocence so the same creator who created lamb which is so meek which is so innocent. Did the same creator make you also? Who You who are so ferocious, who are so terrible, so horrible. Was it possible for the same person to create, it, to create two opposite things, two contrasting things, lamp and tiger? Again, it's a paradoxical question which remains unanswered. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? So these four lines, uh, they have been repeated here. The, the four lines which were already in the beginning. But the uh, difference is that the fourth line here was could. And here there is dare. So, here the poet was questioning the capacity. Could denotes the capacity of a person, of the creator. So, here he was questioning the capacity. Could frame the fearful symmetry. And here he is saying, dare frame thy fearful symmetry. So, dare here shows courage here shows capacity so now because he has described the fearful figure of the tiger now he is uh, saying dare he is showing the courage of the creator who could create this marvelous body proportionate body fearful body of the tiger as you see the structure of the poem, it is, uh, you can divide it into quatrains, 
if you divide into quadrants then the rhyme scheme will be a a b b bright night i symmetry although i and symmetry don't rhyme exactly but it's the rhyme scheme or you can divide the poem into couplets bright night i symmetry sky is eyes aspire fire art heart the poem is as you see it's very beautiful there are alliterations and there are symbols tiger itself is a symbol of ferociousness and lamb here is a symbol of innocence it's a very symbolical and paradoxical poem i hope it's clear to you thank you